The history books have long taught us that the cradle of metallurgy lay in the Fertile Crescent, where early agrarian societies slowly discovered the techniques of smelting ore to create the first metal tools. In this narrative, the Americas were viewed as latecomers to the Metal Age, a continent whose people had used stone and bone and only encountered advanced metallurgy with the arrival of Europeans. But in Wisconsin, a different narrative emerges. It is a story that upends our understanding of human innovation, revealing that thousands of years before the first pyramids ever rose in Egypt, and long before the wheel was discovered, the hunter-gatherers of the North American Great Lakes were already the world's first industrial metal miners. This revelation centers on a specific, largely misunderstood chapter of prehistory known as the Old Copper Culture. For decades, archaeologists had found copper artifacts scattered across the American Midwest. Knives, harpoons, chisels, and spearheads. But their age remained a matter of speculation. The turning point arrived with the analysis of a specific projectile point found near Eagle Lake in Wisconsin, a projectile point fashioned from pure copper, distinctively hammered and shaped. For years, this artifact had been just another item in a collection. Its true significance had remained obscure. It was a conical, socketed spear tip, a design common to the region, but it held a secret that most stone tools could never preserve. Tucked inside the hollow socket, the copper itself had acted like a shield against time. Because copper naturally kills the bacteria that cause rot, it preserved tiny fragments of the original wooden shaft and the string used to tie it. This preservation allowed a team of geologists and archaeologists to perform accelerator mass spectrometry, or AMS, dating. To understand why this matters, you have to look at how things were dated in the past. Traditional radiocarbon dating measured the radioactive decay of carbon-14 by detecting the beta particles it emits. Because these decay events are rare, large samples were required, sometimes forcing researchers to destroy valuable material. AMS works differently. Instead of waiting for atoms to decay, it converts the sample into ions and accelerates them through electric and magnetic fields. Because carbon-14 is heavier than the more common carbon-12, the accelerator separates the isotopes by mass, allowing scientists to count individual carbon-14 atoms directly. This makes AMS far more sensitive and allows accurate dating from extremely small samples. The results were unprecedented. The organic material dated back approximately 8,500 years. The single data point significantly pushed back the timeline. It placed the manufacturing of copper weaponry in the Great Lakes firmly in the early Archaic period, a time when the glaciers of the last Ice Age had only recently retreated. It suggested that the indigenous peoples of this region were working metal at a time when their contemporaries across the ocean were still strictly using Neolithic stone technology. To understand how this was possible, one must first look to the unique geology of the region. Roughly one billion years ago, a massive crack opened in the Earth, nearly tearing the North American continent apart. Molten lava surged up from below, filling the ground with immense amounts of copper. But this copper was special. In areas such as Europe or the Middle East, copper is locked inside rock as ore, meaning you have to cook the rock at incredibly high temperatures to get the metal out. Here, the copper was already pure metal, what scientists call native copper. Later, during the Ice Age, massive glaciers moved across the land like giant bulldozers. They scraped away the earth, dug up these veins of metal, and left behind chunks of pure copper. The first people to resettle this landscape after the ice retreated did not need to invent smelting. They simply needed to look down. However, the assumption that these early inhabitants merely picked up shiny rocks and banged them into shape is a vast underestimation of their sophistication. Recent analysis by geologists and archaeologists has revealed the sheer scale of this enterprise. By analyzing sediment cores from lakes near ancient mining sites, researchers looked for the chemical signature of lead, a byproduct of copper extraction. Now, this might seem puzzling because the copper itself was pure and required no chemical processing. However, mining is a messy, dusty business. To get the copper out, the miners had to pulverize the volcanic rock that encased it. This surrounding rock contained trace amounts of lead. The sediment data tell a story of an industrial revolution that began roughly 9,500 years ago. This timeline is significantly earlier than previously believed, pushing the start of North American mining back by thousands of years. For context, the oldest known copper processing in the Middle East, producing mostly small pendants and beads, did not appear until roughly 8,000 years ago. The data indicate that mining activity intensified rapidly, reaching a massive industrial peak between 7,000 and 5,000 years ago. On Isle Royale alone, an island located in the waters of Lake Superior, thousands of ancient mining pits have been documented. However, the story of the old copper culture contains a twist that is even more baffling than its early start, its sudden stop. Around 3,000 years ago, the archaeological record shows a dramatic shift. 
The pollution by lead in the lake sediments drops back to natural background levels. The great mining pits of Isle Royale fall silent. The production of heavy copper weaponry virtually disappears. When European explorers arrived millennia later, they found the Native American tribes of the region using copper almost exclusively for small ornaments, beads, and tinkling cones. The knowledge of how to make heavy tools had not just been lost, it had been abandoned. This regression contradicts the linear view of human progress, which assumes that once a society gains a technology like metal, it never gives it up. Why would a culture that had mastered the ultimate material for 4,000 years suddenly return to stone and bone? The answer, provided by modern experimental archaeology, forces us to rethink the definition of better. One team of researchers established a laboratory to recreate and test these ancient tools. They forged replicas of the old copper spear points and pitted them against replicas of stone and bone weaponry from the same era. They fired them into ballistics gel, a synthetic material that mimics the density of animal flesh, to measure durability and lethality. The results were illuminating. Copper, for all its prestige, is a soft metal. Tests showed that a copper arrowhead, while deadly, was prone to bending upon impact. A bent arrow requires time and fire to annual and straighten. Stone, by comparison, can be shaped by striking it, which is easier. A stone point might break, but it is made of a material that is everywhere. If a stone tip breaks, you can make another one in minutes. If a copper tip bends, you must engage in a labor-intensive repair process. The data suggested that for the specific task of killing game, copper was not a technological upgrade. It was a lateral move, and an expensive one at that. The only tool that proved objectively superior in copper was the awl, a sharp, thin tool used for piercing leather and birch bark. Copper awls lasted longer and stayed sharper than bone awls. And the archaeological record confirms this. Even after the Great Decline, copper awls remained in use. The people were rational actors. They kept the technology that worked and discarded the technology that was inefficient. But efficiency was not the only factor. The environment itself turned against the miners. Sediment analysis revealed that around 5,000 years ago, the Great Lakes region entered the hypsothermal interval, a scientific term for a prolonged period of intense drought and heat. Lake levels plummeted, drying up wetlands and altering the migration patterns of fish and game. For a hunter-gatherer society, mining is a luxury activity. It requires a food surplus to feed the people digging the pits who are not out hunting. It requires stable trade routes to move the heavy metal. When the climate shifted, the social fabric likely tightened. The immense caloric cost of traveling to Isle Royale, digging pits and hauling rocks, became too high a price to pay for a spearhead that was only marginally better than a sharp rock. Survival took precedence over industry. This isn't a story of failure, but one of adaptability. These people engaged in a metal boom, arguably before anyone else, yet possessed the wisdom to walk away when the technology no longer served them. If anything, it shows that true sophistication isn't just about building the most powerful tools. It's about knowing when to put them down. Thanks for watching. If you found this information valuable, consider giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with others who love deep history. And feel free to leave a comment with your thoughts or questions. Until next time, keep exploring.